Hi, it's Robin. Last week in the Commodore 64 128 group on Facebook, some guy named Parafractic asked, does anyone know how many of the Commodore 1581 floppy drives were sold? Trying to be helpful, I replied that I had worked at a Commodore dealer back in the late 80s and early 90s, and I could assure him that at least one was sold, because that's how many our store sold. But then I remembered reading an excellent article by Michael Steele about estimating the number of Commodore 64 sold on his website, pagetable.com. I'll put a link in the description. He used something called the German tank problem to estimate the total number of Commodore 64s. Wikipedia says, in the statistical theory of estimation, the German tank problem consists of estimating the maximum of a discrete uniform distribution from sampling without replacement. In simple terms, suppose there exists an unknown number of items which are sequentially numbered from 1 to n. A random sample of these items is taken and their sequence numbers observed. The problem is to estimate n from these observed numbers. The problem is named after its historical application by Allied forces in World War II to the estimation of the monthly rate of German tank production from very limited data. This exploited the manufacturing practice of assigning and attaching ascending sequences of serial numbers to tank components, with some of the tanks eventually being captured in battle by Allied forces. They give an example. Assuming tanks are assigned sequential numbers starting with 1, suppose that 4 tanks are captured and they have the serial numbers 19, 40, 42, and 60. Let n equal the total number of tanks predicted to have been produced, m equal to the highest serial number observed, and k equal to the number of tanks captured. So the number of tanks is estimated to be m, the highest serial number, plus m divided by k, the number of samples, minus 1. And that's 74 in this example. There are other approaches to this problem, such as the Bayesian inference. I've chosen to go with the slightly simpler frequentist approach. So trying to be more helpful, I thought I'd give this a try. I started a thread on that Facebook group asking for people to send in photos of their serial numbers, and about 50 people did, representing about 60 drives in total. Some people had more than one. Now I'll go through a few of them here so you get an idea of what we're looking at. So you might recognize that thumb. It's Doug from 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast. Here's his serial number. Most of them start with a prefix such as here, JA1. That prefix may represent a different factory, sometimes in different countries, and it also could just represent a different run even at the same factory. JA1 is the most common series. This is serial number from my friend Leo. First guy I ever knew with a Nintendo DS. So JA1032329. And he also had one from this JE1 series, 003659. This is a smaller series, apparently. Now, this one's from Ken, and it's not that Ken is a terrible photographer. This particular HB series, some of them have this strange chrome label that's just much harder to photograph. We saw a couple examples of that. So here's this HB013534 made in China. And here's one from my friend Jim who created VR64. And he just put out a video about his pet 2001. I recommend you check out. I'll have a link in the description. That's another one from that common JA1 series but quite a low number. And Jim actually opened his up and it had one of the more rare WD1770 floppy disk controllers in it. Most 1581s have a 1772. This one's from Conrad, JA1011335. And this one from Charles is the very highest number we saw from the JA1 series, 036139. And so that highest number is quite important. Stephen had an unusual one here. There's no prefix. 
And the number is just a simple five digit, 00266. And that is the second lowest serial number we saw. Of course, we don't know for sure which series is older than any other. And that series is made in Taiwan. And here's mine, JE1006579, made in Taiwan. And finally, this was a weird one. It doesn't say model 15A1, it says modder. I don't know if that's some other language. This is made in Hong Kong. And it also has a slightly different product number, this dash 04, that we hadn't seen. We're not even sure that this is a legit serial number or badge, but that one is from Marcus. So I put all those serial numbers into this Google Sheet, and there'll be a link in the description to this as well, in case anybody else wants these numbers to build upon. You notice that JA1 is by far the one with the most data, 37 from that series. Okay, and we also got some motherboard serial numbers, but not many. I will use those for a separate estimate, and that's an area that could be expanded upon. We didn't realize until we we're ways into the project that the motherboards have their own unique serial number, and so far we've seen series JA and JE. And that might also be an excellent way of estimating. We could try and estimate the number produced or the number sold. It's probably fairly close. Commodore didn't tend to build huge stockpiles of product that they couldn't sell. And as far as I know, they weren't dumping things in like a, a landfill. When Commodore went bankrupt, it seems that pretty much everything that they had ever made that was stored like in a warehouse or whatever got sold off to the public. Like the Commodore 65s are a perfect example of that. So probably there isn't much difference between the number of drives made and the number sold. Now I have heard that Commodore cannibalized some 1581s to pull the Mac out of them to put in Amigas, but I don't know how many that involves. For a while, JPPBM in Toronto had a fair number of cases and motherboards that were just missing the drive mechanism. I don't know, that, that might only account for a few hundred units or something. Perhaps we can get exact numbers on that. So to actually come up with the estimate, I of course used my Commodore 64, and I wrote a little program in BASIC, and of course I saved it on my 1581 drive. And I called it Tank. This is revision 8. And there's the program, a little bit more than a screen long. And let's just run it so you can see the number, and then we'll talk about it. And there we go. A total of 63,379 1581s. And that's based on these five series that we have. I didn't include that one single six-digit serial number that we thought maybe was fake, and we didn't have any other examples of. You can see each of the total estimates. Basically, we're just getting an estimate for each series and then adding them together. That's suspiciously close to 64,000. Now, there is one gotcha. That number might be about 10,000 high, and I'll explain that. If we look at the data for the HB, we'll see that the lowest serial number there is actually 010403. And with 12 numbers there, and none of them less than 10,000, there's a high chance that series starts at 10,000. So if that's the case, I'm just going to change the number here from... 16,277, which is the highest number in that series. I'm going to subtract 10,000 from that and run that again. Okay, and now the toll comes out at 52,546. So that may be a more accurate prediction. But down here in the data, I actually put the motherboards as well. And I can do a separate run on that data just by, just because of how I coded it. If I change that to end one and then run it again, it'll do both series. This one based on the motherboards, series JA and JE. 
and that comes up with a higher total of 68,574. Now, of course, we don't add these together because these motherboards were inside of these cases. So explain the difference between this one and this one. I feel pretty confident that the total number of 1581s made was around 60,000. Okay, and we'll just take a quick look at the code. For those of you curious, so the program just clears the screen and sets the text color to white, initializes this index X, and reads the series number string. If it starts with the word end, then that means a series is complete and will go to 100, which prints out the results. If not, then we read the highest serial number seen in that series, M, and the number of examples from that series, K. And then we store the total. Here's that frequentist formula, where we just take the integer, just to get rid of the fraction, the highest serial number plus the highest serial number divided by the number of examples minus one. And then we increment the index X just to go on to the next series and go to 20. It's just a loop here. And then when we are done collecting the numbers from all the series, then we just do a loop up to whatever the greatest index number was. We print out the series name indexed by this Y loop we're in. And then this is kind of a hack to write justify the numbers. Commodore Basic doesn't have any built-in formatting instructions. Well, except the comma moves to the next tab, but numbers are naturally left justified and they actually have a space in front of them as well. That's kind of annoying. So if we build a new string of blanks here, four is enough for these numbers, and then convert the number into a string with this function. This is the total. And then comma six is the number of characters from the right of the string we want. Then it will grab the number and whatever number of blank spaces we need to pad it out. So it'll be right justified. And then we just keep track of a total here. Total equals total plus each of the numbers. And then at the end, we just print this little uh, equals line here and print out the total and a little bit of cursor movement. And then we check out, is that really the end? If not, if we put something like end one, then we'll go to 10 and do another group. as just a little change I made. So this could handle multiple groups of serial numbers. And then listing from 170 on, we just see the data statements. That read statement grabs. This is the name of the series, the highest serial number, and the number of examples we have. So yeah, there's a couple of these series we have very few examples of, but the highest serial number is quite low as well. So it's not like we're throwing a huge amount of error in by using those. I'm no statistician. You're welcome to do these numbers yourself. Uh, again, all the data is there. And likewise, the highest serial number on a motherboard we saw was 51,027, and but we only have six examples of that. So there may be a fair bit of error. So again, check the video description for links to the Google spreadsheet to the basic code, and to some of those articles and other YouTube channels I mentioned today. If you haven't already, I'd appreciate you subscribing to my channel. And if you're interested in supporting my work here, check out the link to my Patreon page. Thanks to my patrons for their support, and thank you for watching. We'll talk to you next time. Hey,
stop right there What's that supposed to mean? Can't you say anything else? Well, what else? Ah, positive or negative? Zero or one? True or false? On or off You're a bit Where's your program? Am I your program? Oh, great. Another mouth to feed. You're a bit, and I'm your program. Bit, help me out here. Should we go left or right? Oh, should we go left? Then we'll go right. You're a bit, and I'm your program. We're complementary. Hey, Bit, I'm thinking you're not really a binary digit. More of a trinary bit. A trit?